Let's make some bread. Right here I have a cup of water. It's warm, as warm as you would bathe a baby in. You don't want it to be hot because it'll kill your yeast. Then I have one package of instant yeast. I'm gonna bloom this, basically activate it. The reason I'm doing this is because my yeast is older and I wanna make sure it's good before I waste ingredients. To get it to activate, you need a little sugar. I'm gonna add two tablespoons of honey, thereabout. And if you know me, you know I measure with my heart. Apparently my dog is thirsty. I'm just gonna give this a little stir. And get this yeast broke down and give it about 10 or 15 minutes to make sure it's active before we move on to the next step. Okay, you can see my yeast here. It has bloomed and it is ready for me to use. I double check this because I buy my yeast in bulk. I don't store it in the freezer to extend the life. So I always check it before I use it. I don't want to use up ingredients and my yeast not be any good. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in my mixer and we're going to make bread. You do not have to have a big mixer to make bread. I prefer it because I'm lazy. This is a no knead bread. I'm going to pour my yeast mixture into my bowl. I'm going to make sure I get as much as I can. Now this was one package of yeast, two tablespoons of honey, one cup of warm, not hot water. To that I'm going to add one teaspoon of salt. I'm going to add three cups of all-purpose flour. And I'm going to add two tablespoons of grapeseed oil. Um, I don't usually use measuring tools. So We'll go with that and I'm going to mix. Let me lock this. My mixer is old and messy. This is going to mix for just a couple of minutes until it comes together. I wanted you to be able to see my mixture. It's kind of dry and crumbly and I went and grabbed some extra water to just add a little bit at a time while it's mixing. is a shaggy, it's what you would call a shaggy dough. See it's real shaggy looking. It's very dry. Needs a little bit more moisture but I'm going to do it by hand. I don't want to overwork this. When you add water you just add just a few drops at a time. It goes a lot further than you think it does. So I've washed my hands already. Let me take my ring off. I don't want that in there. I'll go ahead and grab an 
I just want to pull this together. I'm not kneading it. It doesn't need to be kneaded. And if I had started with the right amount of water, I wouldn't even need to do this. But when the temperature and humidity in your house varies, it's difficult to know how much water you're going to need. I say about a cup and a half, but that's hard to tell. So I don't know if you can see, but this is not sticky at all. It's a little bit shaggy, and that's okay. And uh, I'm going to let it sit over here. I'm going to cover it. And I'm going to let it rise until it doubles in size. Usually about two hours. But I need a cover for it. That's my favorite cover. As you can see, my dough has doubled in size. It's pretty nice and full. So now I want to roll it into a log shape and put it in my pan. So you do not need to You do not have to knead this bread. I'm simply doing this to shape it. Get a little oil on the counter. My hands are clean. Let's take off my ring here. Put this out here. And this is how I like to do it. It's really no scientific way to do it. I'll take these ends here, and pinch them. Well, let's roll it one more time. You'll be able to feel the tightness in the dough. those ends and pinch them. All right, and that's it. Now it's ready to rise for the second time, but I'm going to go ahead and put it in the loaf pan to rise the second time. I like to line it with parchment. Certainly you do not have to do that. You can just put it right on in there. And this is the lazy way, fitting it in there. Kind of puts all my creases where they need to be. Like I said, that's not necessary. You could put it right in there. Here's my log. Now it's ready for the second rise. I'm just going to cover it with a towel and wait till it starts to puff up here before I put it in the oven. Here's our bread. It's ready to go in the oven. I'm going to stick it in the oven at 350 for 32 minutes with a tray of water in the bottom of the oven. Here's our beautiful loaf of bread. It's ready to cool. That's where I stuck a thermometer in the center to make sure that the bread is 190 degrees. I'm going to use the parchment paper and lift it out of this pan and put it on a cutting board to cool off and I'm going to butter it. All right, let's get busy. Isn't that beautiful? It smells incredible. I have a stick of butter. I'm just going to rub it on the bread. And this is just a personal preference. I like the butter. I use salted butter. You don't have to use salted butter if you don't want it. And I cover the whole thing in butter. Then this is going to go 
I'll put it in the microwave to cool off um, so that my dogs don't eat it off the counter. And it will not be sliced until tomorrow, but if you make this early in the day and you want to slice it, make sure that it's completely cool because all of the steam that would come out of your fresh bread is your moisture. You don't want to let that go. This is going to go in the microwave until tomorrow and it'll be ready for us to eat. This bread cooled all night, and as you can see, my kiddo has already had bread with his um, breakfast, and he cut some for lunch, but I just want you to see how beautifully this sandwich bread slices. I'm gonna go ahead and make my own breakfast now that he's at school. I mean, isn't it beautiful? Look at this. It's just a few ingredients. It's so simple to make. It cuts wonderfully. and you know exactly what your family is eating. Obviously, you don't have to make fresh bread every day. I choose to. <clears throat> Plus, it's way cheaper than the bread I was buying at the grocery. If you try out this recipe, let me know if you like it. I appreciate your feedback. Thank you for watching.